Warmest greetings to all my incredible subscribers and new viewers alike. Hello, YouTube friends. Join us as we unravel the mysteries surrounding Jennifer Hornsby. Jennifer Hornsby, FBA born 1951, is a British philosopher with interests in the philosophies of mind, action, language, as well as feminist philosophy. She is currently a professor at the School of Philosophy, Birkbeck, University of London. She is well known for her opposition to orthodoxy in current analytic philosophy of mind, and for her use of J. L. Austin's speech act theory to look at the effects of pornography. Moving forward, we'll be taking a closer look at education and career. Hornsby earned heft from the University of Cambridge under the direction of Bernard Williams. She also earned a BA and MPhil from Oxford and London, respectively. She taught at the University of Oxford for 17 years before moving to Birkbeck College, London. She was president of the Aristotelian Society from 1996 to 1997. As we move forward, let's uncover the untold stories and fascinating intricacies of philosophical work. Hornsby's work focuses primarily on the philosophies of mind, action, language, and feminist philosophy. Get ready for an enlightening exploration as we dig into actions and understand its role in the broader context. Hornsby's action theory is significantly influenced by the philosophy of Donald Davidson. In her book Actions 1980, she argues that actions are events occurring beneath the surface of the skin. The argument for this turns on an ambiguity in the slogan all actions are bodily movements. The ambiguity stems from the fact that move is one of a class of verbs that can occur either transitively or intransitively. Nominal expressions containing such verbs are therefore ambiguous, for example, the movement of the flag can refer either to the action of someone's moving the flag or to the resultant movement of the flag. As we only ever answer a question about what someone did by using transitive verbs e.g. Jack moved his arm, not Jack's arm moved unless the latter is taken to imply that the former is true the slogan all actions are bodily movements is only true if movement is read transitively. This ambiguity noted, Hornsby then points out that if a VTS be, then a caused B to VIT and I serving to distinguish between transitive and intransitive uses of the relevant verbs. If Jack raised T the flag, Jack caused the flag to rise I. As causes and effects must be distinct, we must therefore also distinguish between Jack's raising T his arm from Jack's arm's rising I, the former causing the latter. So actions are bodily movements T which cause bodily movements I. The final move is to claim that we know from physiology that the causes of bodily movements I are events that occur beneath the surface of the skin. Therefore, actions occur beneath the surface of the skin. This claim is combined with another, at the most basic description, in the causal sense of basic, of an action is as a trying. This arises from accepting a coarse-grained account of the individuation of events, according to which events are particulars that can be described in many different ways. The descriptions are distinguished by the effects of the described event in terms of which they are picked out. For example, the event of my slamming the door may be identical to the event of my waking the cat. The first description picks out the event by reference to the event of the doors being slammed. The second description picks out the event by reference to the event of the cat's waking. The question then is, is there a description of the events which are actions that picks them out without reference to any effects? Hornsby's answer is that we can describe actions as tryings. I can try to raise my arm and, if successful, my arm will rise. Note, though, that not all tryings are actions, only the successful ones. Get ready for a thought-provoking discussion as we delve into honours and its impact on our understanding. Hornsby is a member of the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters. In July 2017, she was elected a Fellow of the British Academy FBA, the United Kingdom's National Academy for the Humanities and Social Sciences. She was elected International Honorary Member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in April 2018.
In this segment, we'll be unraveling the complexities of books and exploring its multifaceted nature. Actions 1980, Routledge and Kegan Paul, London. Simple-mindedness, a defense of nov-naturalism in the philosophy of mind 1997, Harvard University Press, Cambridge, MA. Get ready for an exciting exploration as we unravel the mysteries of edited collections. Ethics, a feminist reader with Elizabeth Fraser and Sabina Loverbon 1990 to the Cambridge Companion to Feminism in Philosophy with Mayan Africa 2000 Reading Philosophy, Selected Texts with a Method for Beginners with Samuel Guttenpen and Christopher Janaway, 2002 Reading Philosophy of Language, Selected Texts with Interactive Commentary with Guy Longworth 2005. Get ready for an enlightening exploration as we dig into mind and action and understand its role in the broader context. Animalousness in Action, in the philosophy of Donald Davidson, edition Lewis East. Hon Library of Living Philosophers, Open Court, Chicago IL, 1999. Personal and Subpersonal, a defense of Dennett's original distinction, in New Essays on Psychological Explanation, it's... M. Elton and J. Bermudez, Special Issue of Philosophical Explorations 2000. Agency and Actions, in Agency and Action, Ids. H. Stewart and J. Hyman, Cambridge University Press, 2004. Alienated Agents, in Naturalism in Question, Ids. M. DeCaro and D. MacArthur, Harvard University Press, 2004. In this section, We'll be shedding light on language and feminism and its impact on our understanding of the subject. Speech Acts and Pornography, Women's Philosophy Review, 1993. Reprinted in The Problem of Pornography, edition Susan Dwyer Wadsworth, 1995. Elocution and its Significance, in Foundations of Speech Act Theory, Philosophical and Linguistic Perspectives. Edition Salissa Hatsidis Routledge, 1994. Disempowered Speech, in Feminist Perspectives on Language, Knowledge and Reality Philosophical Topics 23.2 Edition South. Haslager University of Arkansas Press, 1995. Free Speech and Elocution, with Ray Langton Legal Theory for 1998. Feminism in Philosophy of Language, Communicative Speech Acts, in the Cambridge Companion to Feminism in Philosophy, Ids. M. Fricker and J. Hornsby Cambridge University Press, 2000. How to Think About Derogatory Words, in Figurative Language Midwest Studies in Philosophy, XXV, Ids. He French and H. Wettstein Blackwell Publishers, 2001. Free Speech and Hate Speech, Language and Rights, in Normativity, Facts, and Values, Ids. R.G.D., M. Delautry, and M. DeCoro Quadlibit, Mesota, 2003. Let's zoom in on truth and metaphysics and understand its implications. Truth, the Identity Theory, Proceedings of the Aristotelian Society 97-1997. Reprinted in Truth, edition Michael Lynch, MIT Press, 2001. Dealing with Facts. In a symposium on Stephen Neal's Facing Facts, Philosophy and Phenomenological Research forthcoming 2005. Physicalism, Conceptual Analysis, and Acts of Faith, in Minds, Worlds and Conditionals, Essays in Honor of Frank Jackson, Edition I. Ravenscroft Oxford University Press, forthcoming. Truth Without Truthmaking Entities, in Truthmakers, Ids. HBB and J. Dog Oxford University Press. I'm here to provide you with the best information, so let me know what else you'd like to learn about.